we're going to be doing today is talking about what to expect when you're expecting it. And I'm I'm really glad that you guys have all chosen parenthood. And, and even if that parenthood is simply SolidWorks PDM. And I, I wanted to present it in this way, because when you think about PDM, when you think about a software implementation, it can get kind of boring, right? Like if I sit here and I talk about, here's what you need for your servers, and here's what you need for your users, you'll get bored. We all will. So I want to make this fun. I want to make this interesting for you. So we're, we're kind of going to go down this route. What to expect when you're expecting PDM in this case. Like Kyle said, I'm Nick Sweeney. I'm an application engineer with CATI as well. Uh, I focus on SolidWorks PDM and DriveWorks as my two primary tools. And this topic right here is one of the most routine topics that we talk about all the time. Kyle can attest to this as well, but whenever we jump on a call with someone, everybody wants to know, okay, we're going to get PDM. Well, well, what should we do to get ready for that? You know, what, uh, when do we need to be ready? Do our users have to change what they're doing right now? What can we do to give ourselves the best chance at being successful? And that's what we'll go through today. Now, specifically our topic list, we are going to keep with this theme uh, throughout the presentation. So in our first trimester, and I do realize that these trimesters are not even, but our first trimester, well, first we're going to talk about, well, you're expecting now what? So we're going to talk about things that you can do for your users, things that you can do to just get started. Now you really want to start thinking about PDM and what that's going to do for you. Then we'll talk about your servers. We want to talk about what does that need to look like? What kind of things do we need to have now? What could potentially wait? The second trimester, we're going to get into getting your data ready and getting your users ready. So we'll talk about baby proofing, making sure that we have clean data, making sure that everything is safe for our users. Then we're going to assemble that crib for them to crawl around and make sure that they can kind of develop, make sure that they can access what they need to access and that, you know, maybe they don't always have access to everything. And the final trimester, which again, I know that this isn't perfect because uh, the third trimester is definitely not when the baby is born, it's born after, but we'll talk about the delivery room and actually having PDM implemented and what that means for you, who needs to be there the day that we're going to go live, and then what we're going to do after, how are we going to maintain the system? So you're expecting, uh, now what? So the bid day's coming, you finally know that the, the bid bundle of PDM joy is going to be part of your family, but you're probably asking yourself, what should I be doing right now? How can I be ready for this implementation? You know, you might be like this guy, I, I barely know how to manage my own data. Maybe, maybe I'm making a mistake. Is this really a good idea? Well, stay calm and let's think about our next steps. So the very first step that we want to take is talking to our users and explaining that PDM is in fact going to be part of their system going forward. We want to talk about what it's going to do for their jobs, how they're going to have to start using workflows and the data cards and accessing files and how, how it's going to change what they do or maybe make what they do better. We also want to start talking about the data that we're going to be working in. So we need to understand what data is going to be coming into our new system for migrations. You know, do we want to bring over everything or do we want to leave some legacy data behind all things that we really want to start thinking about. And implementation is critical. I mean, that's the whole thing that we're talking about here, but proper implementation truly is important. And if you talk with any of us over at CATI, the first thing that we want to do is plan this out. So when you work with us, we, we try to plan out every single step. We want to know each task that we're doing and what days we can expect it to happen. We're also going to want to know who's going to be involved. Who are the stakeholders? Who needs to be in the room the day of the delivery? That's the important thing to do. But making a plan and sticking to it, even if someone else does this, making a plan and sticking to it when you implement your PDM, that's what we've done in the past. And that's part of why we see the companies that we work with have so much success with their PDM implementations. So what's on the shopping list? Well, you're probably asking questions like, well, how big is this going to be? Should we worry about buying something and making sure that, that it can grow into it? You know, you don't want to buy baby clothes that are way too big, but you don't want to buy that so small. And, and what if you don't get enough, enough food? What if you don't get enough, in this case, RAM, something like that for your server? Well, all of those are valid concerns. And the first step is just figuring out what are these servers going to look like? So you're going to have questions that you'll want to answer. First, you'll want to ask yourself, well, how much data are we really going to have on this server? And that's going to play right into the archive server. So there are two primary servers for PDM that we want to think about. There are other components, but these are the two primary that you need on day one. When you think about your servers, you do want to have some wiggle room that you can grow into it. Generally speaking, if you take your current data set size, let's say we're moving your J drive, everything on there into PDM. If you take that, multiply it by three, that's decent growth. That's something that you could probably expect. Uh, now, our expectation here is that every two or three years, you'd want to replace that server because hardware will be up to date and, and making sure that your server OS and SQL is up to date. 
Now, if you're going through a growth spurt, well, then we want to make sure that we're really counting for this and saying, you know, let's be really conservative. Let's be really liberal with our estimate here. You don't want to go with five times your current data set, but we want to plan ahead. We want to have a, a good size hard drive, a good solid state drive, I might add, to make sure that we can actually house all this data. The second server that we have is our database server. And the first question you want to ask yourself with that is, okay, PDM standard or PDM professional? The reason that we want to understand that is to understand what kind of Microsoft SQL do we need to install on our server. For PDM standard, that is SQL Express. That's not optional, that's required. SQL Express is the Microsoft SQL that is used for PDM standard. If you've got PDM professional, well, you have an option of going SQL standard or SQL enterprise. SQL enterprise would be if you need database replication, your IT team probably already knows that answer and if you've already got it. So what year should you get? Well, you have to get at least 2014 Service Pack 3, the latest release of it. That's okay, but if you want to take advantage of the newest performance enhancements, uh, PDM in the last performance update had, I think it was a 30% uh, faster time for checking in, checking out files. That's fantastic, but if I'm on SQL 2014, it's not gonna take advantage of it. It's not gonna be that 30% faster. Instead, you might only get five, 10% or something like that versus the later version of SQL, the newer you are, the more it's going to have those updates for you. It's going to be ready to go. Also with your database server, we wanna think about RAM and processors uh, to go along with that. If you go on the server requirements page on SolidWorks' website, you're gonna see that it requires at least 16 gigabytes of RAM, but more is pretty much always better. Maybe don't fill your entire guest room with RAM, but making sure that we've got enough space for this. So if you can, if you can only go 16, that'll work. It will be sufficient, but if you can go 32 or 64 or more, then that's going to give you better performance. Making sure that your processor, we want to make sure it's a support a processor. So that's typically an Intel or an AMD processor. That's at least 3.3 gigahertz. Better is, is good. And if you're looking at all of this saying, uh, uh, do we want to have new servers? You know, RT is going to throw a fit. You can host these virtually. You just have to make sure that you can run Windows Server 2016 or 2019, make sure that SQL can run, and maybe have a conversation with us just to say, here's what we're thinking. Can that work? Yes, no. What are the risks? What kind of things should we be thinking about? But they don't have to be on-premise servers by any means. That was a lot. That's a lot for your servers. That's that's a fair bit for IT to absorb. So, you know, they're probably going to be asking, is all of this really necessary on day one? Like, what do we really need? Um, do we need two servers? Can this be one server? It can all be one server if you want it to be. But I will say uh, you you want to understand what this is going to look like going forward. You don't want to be the dad of PDM in this case that gets to the hospital and realizes he doesn't have a car seat for his newborn son to ride home in. I say that because I was that son. My dad had to go out and buy the car seat the day I was born. So that was fun. But it's important that we expect a growing data set. We want to plan for a bigger hard drive because that means that you're not going to have to worry about relocating to a new server after six months or a year. You also don't want to be that guy that has to go into IT and say, hey, remember that PDM server we stood up two months ago? We need more space. We've already run out of space. Uh, well, that's not an expandable drive. Well, then we need to buy a new server. You don't want to do that. So plan ahead, plan for growth. Don't plan for excessive growth, but plan for reasonable growth. And hey, if you outgrow it, even still planning way ahead, that just means that you guys have really good growth going on. All right, the second trimester, we're gonna start with proofing our system for the baby. In this case, we're gonna start proofing our data to go into SolidWorks PDM. And you'll be asking questions like, well, what if they're crawling around the system and they get lost? Well, they won't, they shouldn't. What if something breaks and how are they gonna react? What are those references gonna look like? What if they get some broken references inside of PDM? What if they break references? Well, they shouldn't be able to break references, but we'll talk about what we can do to mitigate that. And what if they're gonna sit their fingers in that wall socket over there? Should we be plugging that? You probably should, but that might not be the, this might be a different webinar than what you really need. Determining your folder structure for the vault is going to be really, really important. That's going to be step one. We want to think about things like our stock components. Think about your fasteners. Do your fasteners need to go in the same folder as your projects? So you create a new project, you add the fastener to that folder. Or maybe do you just have a stock components folder and everyone references that? Related to that, that could lead to duplicates. What if we have the same quarter 20 fastener or quarter, quarter 20 bolt used in multiple projects? 
Well, if I have the same file multiple times set of PDM, that's going to bloat our database. So we don't really want to do that. We want to understand for our duplicates, if we're going to bring them over, which one or ones are we going to take? We want to understand what we're going to do with our duplicates. And then we want to make sure that we clean up our data because that's going to play a big role in what our system looks like. There's this whole phrase with Stardust PDM, and I, I swear we all say it and we do not get paid by the number of times that we say it. But the phrase is with PDM, it's a garbage in, garbage out system. What that means is that if I have an assembly with five broken references and I put it into Sawdust PDM, I'm still going to have five broken references. PDM does not magically fix references. It'll maintain existing references to the best of its ability. It does a fantastic job with it. But if we put broken, broken references in a PDM, we'll still have them and we'll still have to go and fix them. So clean those up, understanding what that looks like. Same thing with long file paths. If you actually have a file path that's over 230 characters, that can start to lead to problems within Windows and Solidworks PDM because it loses the ability to really parse that file path apart. There are tools out there that you can use to scan it. Uh, if you talk with us about your migration, we can understand what your references look like, what your file paths look like, but you want to start understanding that. So whether you go through that by hand or if you work with us and we scan your data with you, that's all things that we want to think about. We want to start cleaning this up because the cleaner our data is when we put it into PDM, the cleaner the results are going to be, the easier it's going to be for us to look around and find what we need. All right, assembling the crib. You might be like this, Dad, and be very smart and go to the instructions and understand what it looks like. Or you might be like me and think, I don't need instructions. Anybody can do this. But I've got this extra bag of bolts, and that might be a problem. And yeah, it might be. So now that we know what our servers will look like, let's talk about how our users are going to work within PDM. Let's think about which users are going to need to have full access to the vault. The reason we want to think about that is because if something absolutely crazy and unforeseen happens, I don't know what could possibly cause this, but every user suddenly has to work from home. They can't work inside of the office. Well, what you might want to do is set up a VPN for them. If you've got good connections that can work just fine, they would just have to turn on their VPN. Now it can work on, on those servers and connect up to it. They'll be really, really happy. We also want to make sure that those users have full connections. So we want to validate that when they go into the vault, that they can see the folders that they're expected to. We want to make sure that when they look at the archive server, that doesn't show up and say, you do not have permission to access this folder. We don't want that to happen. So we want to validate that they've got the proper permissions to see those different servers. You also might have users that aren't in the vault full time, and really they're just viewing files. They're not really inside of SOLIDWORKS, and, and they're going to be accessing this via tablets or their cell phone. Really, they're not going to be on their computer all that much. In that case, you might want to start looking at a web environment. You can set up a web server. All you have to do is make sure you've got a server that can run IIS and that you then have access to it as your users. But we'll start thinking about that and say, okay, these 10 users are going to be web users. So we'll set up viewer licenses for them. We'll set up their accounts. More things to think about. But we want to make sure that that network is good and that it's strong because that's going to give us the best chance of our users connecting and getting what they're supposed to. Okay, so now we're in the delivery room. We, we've prepared our data. We've done everything that we possibly can. We'll go through the checklist. And the first thing that's going to be on that checklist is making sure that every person that's in, that needs to be in the room is going to be in the room. So to start off, IT needs to be in the room with us. The reason for that is we're installing things on servers. Think about it. I talked about Microsoft SQL earlier, talked about the archive server and the database server as a whole. There are different utilities that need to be installed there. For SQL, we need to make sure that we have the SA password, make sure that the firewalls are going to be lenient enough that we can put in the exceptions for the ports. Those are things that IT is going to need to help us with. Now, you might know the answers to all those things, and that's fantastic. But generally, having IT at least on the phone, at least saying like, hey, uh, can you help us out with this password? Just having them on standby, that kind of thing. It's going to be really important. Secondly, we need someone that's going to be the voice of the team on setup. Typically, that's going to be the administrator. And this administrator doesn't have to be a full-time administrator. But we need somebody that can answer the questions and, and say, this is what everybody's saying, this is what we need. For example, we look at workflows when we implement Sardis PDM. You can set up a workflow any way you want. They're really, really flexible things. However, when we're looking at it, if we grab 10 engineers and we say, tell us what you need for this workflow, which one of these, I don't know, three makes the most sense. I'm going to get 10 different answers for why that workflow works best for each person. What I need the administrator to do is then say, I hear everybody's points. 
I hear what you all need. This is the one we're going to go with, and this is why. That's why we have the administrator in the first place. And it's really important, and this is actually going to lead into the next point, is that if things aren't perfectly set up, like if your workflow isn't set up to the point where, well, in two years we implement this process and it's not ready inside of PDM, that's okay. PDM is a tool that you can enhance this tool and you can grow it as you grow. So you don't have to have this amazing, incredible engineering change process when there's really only two people inside of PDM standard. It doesn't make sense to do that. So as you go, you can modify the system. You can make changes to the system. What you do on day one is not set in stone for what it will be on day 1000. Which takes us into going home and maintaining this system at the very end. So, you know, we, we finally did this, but now we need to make sure that we're not going to mess this baby up. So when can we, I don't know, some of the questions you might, do, you might have, when can we start feeding the baby solid food? And while it might not be best to put food on your server, we have worked with food-based companies before. So, hey, if you, that's what you need to do, then go for it. But what's going to be really important is that you monitor your system. So as you do your validation and your testing, take notes on what needs fits now and what you might be able to grow into. You think about it this way, that workflow I talked about earlier, does that workflow do what you need right now? Yes, great, then we're happy. But you might be going through the workflow thinking, you know, if we could add this state right here, or if, if this task could become automated, you know, we always manually print our PDFs, it'd be cool if we could actually do something like that. Write that down, take those notes. And it, think about it this way, um, for your users, because your users will want to do testing as well, if the users have something that they want, that they want, encourage them to talk to you because trust me, if they want something, they're going to tell you about it. If you haven't taken administrative training as well, as part of your constant improvement, I cannot recommend taking administrative, taking admin training enough. It's twofold. It lets you learn how to be the administrator of your system, how to make changes to your system. What do you need to do to add a state to a workflow? What should you be doing to work with your backups? We'll get to that here in a second. That's all stuff that's going to be important. And even if you don't have time to be a full-time administrator, you'll understand this is what's happening. You can then become the point of contact with tech support if there's a problem. It also means that if you need a change and you need CATI to be involved, you get on the phone with us and you start saying, so here's what we want, and you speak the same language that we do. So then when we say, oh yeah, well, I have this, this automatic uh, set variable on this workflow transition, you'll know exactly what that means. And you'll be able to say, okay, I like that, but how about this? And the last part of this is making sure you have a backup schedule set. We always want to do that as part of the implementation. And as far as maintaining it, having a backup schedule might be the most important thing that you guys do as part of implementing PDM. But just setting up your backups isn't enough. You also need to validate those backups. One of the best ways I've ever heard, and I learned this uh, through the experience world, I'd never thought of this, take your backups because they're a full backup of your system, restore from backup and create a test environment. It's twofold. Then you know, hey, my backups are doing well, so if the worst possible situation ever unfolded, I have a way of going back to where I need to be. Now, that might be weekly backups, might be bi-weekly, might be every day. It's up to you how that works, but validate those backups and create test environments. The second part of that is that now you can start using the things that you've learned in administrative training and saying, let's change this workflow. Maybe these aren't changes you wanna make in your production environment until you're certain they're, they're solid, make sure it's gonna work the way you expect. A test environment's a great place to test that. and it lets you test your backups. But remember, with PDM, everything that you do, everything that we've talked about, PDM is a marathon, it is not a sprint. So it, it's not something that everything has to be perfect on day one. Set it up for success right now, and then you can modify it, you can change it, you can correct course if you absolutely have to do that. So what have we talked about today? Well, these were our primary topics. And the first thing that you want to do when you're finally expecting PDM, when you've decided, yes, let's go forward with this. What should we do day one? Start talking to your users. Talk to them and explain to them what PDM is, what it's going to do. Give them a chance to start Googling, start watching YouTube videos. Call us if you need to, just to understand what this is going to do for their job. You also want to start reviewing their data, reviewing what data you're going to be working on, what data needs to come over to PDM now, what data could potentially wait in the migration stage. And then create a plan, create that implementation plan going forward and say, here's what we want to do. Here are the people that are going to be in charge. Here are the stakeholders. Understand what that looks like going forward. Then we want to start getting our servers ready for your archive server, three to five times your current database size, solid state drive, 
that's going to be critical there for your database for your database server then we want to have microsoft sql spun up whether it's sql standard or sql express or sql enterprise depends if you're on pdm standard or pdm professional both servers need to be on windows server at least 2016 2019 is also supported one at least 16 gigabytes of ram and a good processor as well then we want to start working about our data and understanding what we've got and how we can improve it. So clean that data up. Try to ensure you have as few broken references as possible. If you can get it to zero, then that is fantastic. Shorten your file paths as well. You don't necessarily need your toolbots to be at the bottom of your vault. You can put it at the top if you want. Find a way to shorten that and keep it under 230 characters. And understand how your folders are going to go together. Do you have one, one simple place for your stock components to live, or are they going to be scattered throughout the vault? Just things to think about. Then it's getting your environment ready for your users, setting up a VPN for those remote users, maybe even a web environment, depending if they're just going to be viewing files not on their laptop. For the deployment, we want the right people to be in the room. So making sure that IT is there for passwords, making sure the administrator is there as the voice of everybody, making sure that they are there to say, this is what we need and this is why. Think about who those stakeholders are and what are their thoughts on the system. And finally, managing the system long-term. It's a marathon, it's not a sprint. Take your training, listen to your users. It's just like a newborn baby. When people want something, you're going to hear about it. So that's everything that I have for getting ready for your PDM implementation.